In this lesson, we will go through the key code files within the React Native Template project and demo the development workflow that you can use to start writing your own code and playing around with little experiments. So let's go. Here we have the project folder called Demo React Native open within VS Code. The first file that we will look at is the package.json file. A key portion of this file is the scripts section. You can see that we have scripts for Android and iOS already created for us. So instead of having to do npx react native run Android or npx react native run iOS, we could actually just do npm run Android and npm run iOS. We can also modify these scripts to be a bit more specific. For example, if you always want to run the iOS simulator for iPhone 13 Pro, we can add that command line flag to the iOS script. Now beyond the scripts for Android and iOS, there is actually one more script that is useful for running called start, which will actually invoke react native start. So let's look at why this script is useful. From the console, if you actually run npm start within the project folder, you can see that it actually runs the metro bundler that we saw in the previous lesson. This does not start the iOS or the Android simulator and is only designed to run the live bundling of our application and we can start the simulators as many of them as we want with just a single instance of metro running in the background. For example, in another terminal session, we can run the command npm run android to start the android emulator. And now because we have metro running in the background, this command will only build and deploy our application to the emulator. And once we have the application running in the emulator, we can exit this particular terminal session as we don't need this particular console open anymore. Similarly, while still leaving metro running in the background, in another terminal, we can execute the command npm run iOS and similar to npm run Android, it will only build and deploy our application to the iOS simulator and not start Metro because that is already running. With the app successfully launched in the simulator, we can exit this particular terminal as well. With this particular workflow, we started Metro with npm start and use the command npm run iOS and npm run Android only to start those devices and exit those particular terminals. So in the end, we have a single terminal session with Metro running with both of these devices connected. That's it for the package.json scripts. Now let's take a look at our main application component file called app.tsx. We have some simple imports from the React module, which is React and a type that helps with annotating function components. And then we have a number of utilities imported from the React Native module. We will look at these and more throughout this course. Next, we have a number of imports from the new app screen module. This module is something that exists purely for demo purposes and is designed to provide custom startup instructions for people that are running this particular demo app on different platforms. Next, we have a simple section component and the objective over here is that if you are already familiar with React programming, you can use your knowledge of creating reusable components for React Native as well. And then finally, we have the app component, which is the main component that we are viewing on screen and you can see our custom section component getting reused within this app component. Now, one great thing about React Native is that it allows you to use CSS for styling your native components. Traditionally, you would need to understand different form of styling for the different platforms, but with React Native, you get to reuse your knowledge of CSS from web development. Additionally, this is actually CSS in JS, that is CSS props converted into a JavaScript object. This means unlike web react, where you have to make your own decision of which CSS and JS framework you are going to use, this is built in into react native. So this is one less decision that you need to make. Finally, this particular module exports the app component. The decision to render this particular app component as the main component is made within the application entry point called index.js. You can see that we are registering this app component as the component that should be rendered for this particular app. Now let's get rid of everything that is currently there within app.tsx and create something very basic so that you can understand the fundamentals of creating your own custom React Native app. We start off by bringing the usual React import from React. Then from the React Native module, we bring in the stylesheet API and the view component. With the imports out of the way, we can use the stylesheet.create function to create a stylesheet with a member root that has a nice pleasing blue background color and a height and width of 100% to fill up the entire screen. We use this style sheet within our main app component, which is a simple React function component that returns the view component with the style applied from our style sheet root member. Finally, just like before, we set this app component as the default export from app.tsx. 
and this gives you the basic skeleton of what an app is going to look like within React Native. Now I actually left Metro running in the background throughout this process with npm start. So we have this application now running within the Android emulator as well as the iOS simulator. And it has been live reloading our app throughout this entire process. And we can demo that further by changing the background color of our main route to be something like a nice pleasing red. In the next lesson, we will take a look at the core architecture that powers React Native. Thank you for joining me. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you in the next one.